Now, the final thing that we're going to do is to recycle the condensed water from our flash vessel here back into our process up here. Now, whether or not we would do this in reality is a moot point, but what this does demonstrate very nicely is the care required when you start to deal with recycle operations. Now, recycle operations, again, are not physical pieces of equipment. They're simply a pipe loop that would join one part of a process to another, probably via a pump. But what they are in a process simulator, especially one of the nature of Unisim, is a mathematical operation. It's an iteration algorithm that always tries to iterate the flow sheet to a solution such that the difference across a recycle operation goes to zero. Now, I'm going to demonstrate two ways of doing this. I'm going to demonstrate the wrong way of doing this, and then I'm going to demonstrate the right way of doing this. So let's start with the wrong way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a recycle operation, which is this diamond with a green R in it down here, and I'm going to connect it to V100 liquid. So on the inlet of my recycle, I have V100 liquid. On the outlet, I have an appropriately named material stream. I'm just going to call that recycle one outlet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this stream into this heat exchanger. After all, this is roughly 25 bar and it's liquid. So that stream should be near to the conditions that are coming out at this pump here. So the way I'm going to connect this together, first of all, is to stop the solver. And if we go up to the row of icons below the menu, you'll see there are two traffic lights. One is a green traffic light solver active. The other is a red traffic light solver stopped. And if you remember all throughout the building of the flow sheet so far, whenever we've placed something on the flow sheet, it automatically calculates. And so as soon as you do something, the flow sheet updates, we want to stop it doing that. So we're going to click solver holding. The next thing we're going to do, and very importantly, we're going to save the simulation. And we're going to save it with a numbering system whereby each time we save it, we give it a different number because we always want to be able to revert to the last known working simulation because there is no such thing as an undo button with something like Unisim, which is a sequential modular process simulator. Once you commit data to a flow sheet, it'll rework the entire flow sheet with that data and there's no easy way of going back other than going to something you've already saved. So I'm going to go save as. I'm going to call this Steam Reformer 004. You'll see I've already got a few that I've saved here. So this is Steam Reformer 004. That means I can get to this point again very quickly and very simply. So I'm going to connect Recycle 1 Outlet into the inlet of E100. So that means I have to mix Recycle 1 Outlet with P100 with a mixer block. And then I'm going to connect that mixer block outlet into this heat exchanger. So let's do that. So first of all, I'm going to disconnect that stream from the heat exchanger. I'm going to specify a mixer block and place it on the flow sheet. I'm going to then double click on that mixer block. I'm going to give it P100 inlet, P100 outlet rather, and recycle one outlet, and name its own outlet, mix 100 outlet. Okay, note that it says not solved. It hasn't solved because our solver is off. If we now click the solver on, we see that it solves. Now, the thing we haven't done is connect this new outlet into the heat exchanger. So let's do that. There we go. And it says OK. And at first glance, apart from looking a little bit messy, this flow sheet looks all fine. Now, look very carefully at this recycle operation here. It has not got a black border. It has got a yellow border. Let's just zoom in and show you that. So note that that has a yellow outline. Let's just zoom out again. So there's a problem. If we double click on this, it says reach iteration limit without converging. If we have a look in the information window down here, we can also see that it says maximum iterations reached. So, OK, we can click continue to allow it to keep iterating. And we can keep hitting continue and continue and continue, but we still get the same error. 
ultimately, we break the simulation and we come across an error which says a negative absolute pressure is encountered. Let's investigate why this has happened. If we have a look at the magnitude of the water flow into the reformer, we'll see that its molar flow has increased to 3.7 times 10 to, the, 10 to the 4 kilomoles per hour from 150 kilomoles per hour. Now let's just think logically what we've just done. We've got a fixed water flow rate coming in here. We're recycling water from this into here, but we haven't changed how much is coming in. And so we've got a constant accumulation of water around and around and around this recycle loop. And so the flow sheet keeps accumulating mass, which is not an appropriate description of the physical reality. So we need to do one of two things. We either need to make sure that we remove mass somewhere, or we simply put less mass in in the first place. So what we're going to do is the latter option, and we're going to have a quick revert back to the flow sheet that we just saved. So we're going to go File, Open, Case, Steam Reformer 0004. We're going to reload it from disk. We're going to lose the changes we've just done and we're back to where we were a few minutes ago. So what we need to do first of all is just double click on this recycle and have a look at this worksheet here. This is the balance across our recycle. This is a very, very useful tool and we'll be consulting this later on. First of all, let's look at the pressure. We've got 24.79 bar here, not 25 bar, which is required here. Now, when you mix two streams together, the pressure will revert to the lowest pressure in the two entrant streams. So not only have we got a mass accumulation problem, but we've got a consequential pressure reduction problem because each time we go around this flow sheet, we lose 0.2 bar, then we lose another 0.2 bar. And so this mixing process here keeps dropping in pressure. So we need to match the conditions of recycle one outlet pressure wise to exactly what's going on here. So we're going to do that by specifying a small pump. So we're going to put a pump on this recycle. I'm just going to turn it around to make it look nice and neat. I'm going to connect recycle one outlet as my inlet to the pump. I'm going to have P101 outlet as the outlet and an energy stream as well, because even though it's a small amount of energy that's required by the pump, it nonetheless requires energy. Then we're going to solve the unknown duty problem again by specifying the outlet pressure to 25 bar exactly. Now, it hasn't calculated because of course our solver is off. That's how we set it before we save the flow sheet. So I'm just going to click it back on briefly. I'm going to mouse over that outlet material stream and it's 25.00 bar. That's fine. And the pump pressure is negligible, but that's not the purpose of why we put it here. Now what we're going to do is to have a look at the composition of this stream. We've got 51.19 kilomoles total flow, but if we have a look at how much of that is water, 99.83 mole percent is water. So actually, the total water flow here is 51.103 kilomoles per hour of water. And so if we're adding that much water back into the process here, we need to reduce the input by the same amount here to maintain 150 kilomoles an hour here. So, solve it off, save flow sheet. We save the last one as 004, this one is going to be 005. We're going to, as before, remove the pump outlet from that first heat exchanger, disconnected it there. As before, we're going to put in a mixer. Now we're going to connect P100 outlet and P101 outlet into that mixer. We're going to give the mixer outlet a name, Mix 101 out. But we don't yet connect this into our heat exchanger. Now we need to reduce the inlet liquid water flow by that 51.103 kilomoles per hour. So let's double click on that. If we subtract 51.103 from 150, we end up with 98.897, so let's just put that in instead, 98.897023.
And this has calculated an unknown flow rate, again, because the solver is off. Now, before we turn the solver back on, we're going to reconnect mix 101 into E100. Now we're going to put the solver back on and we see that this recycle has a black border around it and in the dialog down here it says recycle one converged. Let's double click on the recycle and look at the mass and the energy balance across it. We've got our molar flow rates equal coming in and coming out, We've got our pressures equal in and out and our temperatures in and out. Moreover, the molar flow in is still 51.19, which is what we would expect. Remember that these iterative recycle operations will increase and increase and increase the recycle rate until the balance across a recycle is achieved within a convergence tolerance, which although small, if the flow is large, a small convergence tolerance can still mean a significant loss of mass. And so what we've done here, in effect, is added a makeup feed, because this feed here now is only two thirds of the total water flow here. And so it's making up the balance for what we can't recycle. And so that is the final point I wanted to demonstrate within Unisim today for you, which was how to effectively and sensibly add recycle operations. Okay, so you've completed all the tutorials. What I'd like to do now is just wrap up with a few key points to remind you of the salient features of the tutorial videos that you've seen. So, point number one, the choice of thermodynamic model is key. Remember how the non-random two liquid model didn't work as expected at high pressure. And remember how at the outset we just assumed it would be valid. We didn't take any validation steps. So, point number one, never forget to validate your thermodynamic model. Point number two, we match the model to the simulation aim. Our aim was to produce a first run heat and mass balance and so we use simplified unit operations to achieve that. Point number three. What I'd like to encourage you to do is not view process simulation as some kind of video game. It needs to reflect engineering reality. So research how unit operations work. Remember when we started to build our compressor sequence up that we could have just specified one compressor and had a completely unreasonable and unachievable end temperature. A temperature that would have in effect completely wrecked the operation of that compressor. What we did instead was say no, actually we know that compressors don't work in this way. What we need to do is separate the compression stages such that we have a specified outlet temperature that doesn't exceed what's going to melt the bearing grease and then break up our compressor into three or four stages. So research how unit operations work such that you learn how to model them properly. A fourth really important point, which was quite pertinent when we started setting up recycle operations, is save often. Moreover, don't overwrite the previous thing that you've just saved because you might need it again. So save often and save with different file names. I tend to use a numeric sequence, 0001, and I might get into the hundreds by the end of a particularly lengthy piece of process simulation. Always have a point back to which you can revert, because don't forget, Control Z, undo, doesn't work. Recycle with great care. We saw in that final tutorial how easy it was to wreck a simulation with an incorrectly and badly thought out recycle system. You do need to think carefully about how to alter your feeds when you put a recycle in and how that recycle is going to affect other unit operations within your process. You also need to critically examine the results after recycling. Has the simulator just simply increased all the flow rates around the recycle loop to lose any mass balance error within a convergence tolerance? So don't assume a simulator will just do a recycle. You, the engineer, actually has to sit down and think how it is to be done.